Since they first got into making rides, one of the most prominent coaster manufacturers has been Vacoma. In the earlier days, however, Vacoma was cranking out subpar rides with notoriously bad reputations, often being called rough and uncomfortable. Nowadays, they've undergone a complete renaissance, creating some coasters that are among the greatest in the world. But how is Vacoma able to do a complete 180 and go from one of the worst manufacturers to one of the best? Well, let's start at the beginning. Vacoma started off in the 1950s by making farm equipment and steel used in coal mining. After continuing to produce steel for various chemical industries, Aerodynamics contacted Vacoma with a proposition, manufacture the steel needed for their coasters in Europe. Vacoma became an independent manufacturer under Aero, which is one of the main reasons why their older rides are so similar. Vacoma built their first coaster in 1979, that was Tornado at Wallaby, Belgium. It's now closed. Over the next five years, they built 13 coasters. These were all part of the MK1200 model, a type of coaster very similar to the Aero Corkscrew. In 1984, though, Vacoma built a few installments of a new model, the Boomerang. Although it is unknown which of these opened first, three Boomerangs were built in 1984. Boomerang at La Ronde, Sea Serpent at Maurice Piers, and Boomerang at Belouard in Belgium. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but whatever. Although they are mostly not enjoyable today, the new model was a hit back then, providing a unique, thrilling experience in a compact plot of land. Vacoma continued to construct MK1200s and boomerangs all around the world for the next few years. In 1987, Vacoma built Big Thunder Mountain at Tokyo Disneyland. This was very well received by enthusiasts and the general public alike, despite being built more for families. This was the first step in a beneficial and long-lasting relationship with Disney parks all around the globe. For the next seven years, Vacoma stayed in their comfort zone, building looping models, family coasters, boomerangs, and the occasional Disney mine train. But 1992 was when everything changed. A Swiss manufacturer, B&M, made the world's first inverted coaster, Batman the Ride at Six Flags Street America. A few more of these B&M inverts before Vacoma introduced their answer. The most hated coaster model in the world, the suspended looping coaster, otherwise known as the SLC. For parks, this model was great, an almost interchangeable type of ride at half the cost. Why spend $12 million on an invert when you could spend five? But cost was the only benefit to the SLC over B&M invert. To this day, SLCs all around the world are often regarded as some of the worst coasters ever, and I'd have to agree. So far, I've only ridden one, that being Blue Tornado at Gardaland, and it was easily the worst coaster I've ever been on. It was rough, painful, and overall a complete nightmare, and from what I can tell, that's how the rest of the model is as well. And for the next decade and a half, Vacoma continued doing what they had been doing. They pumped out their usual portfolio with only a few minor innovations like the Invertigo, Giant Inverted Boomerang, as well as some Disney coasters. One big risk Vacoma did take was that of the Flying Dutchman model. A predecessor to the more popular B&M flying coaster, the Flying Dutchman never really took off. Although it was good innovation, it was poorly executed just like the rest of Vacoma's projects at the time. The one exception to this was 2002's Gravity Max, the first Vacoma tilt coaster. Located at Lipau Land in Taiwan, it's not exactly easy to get to, but those who have ridden it say that it's one of Vacoma's best coasters. It's certainly unique being the first tilt coaster ever, and I'm excited to see more of these in the next few years now that there's one coming to Energylandia and now Kotaland. But aside from Gravity Max, the 1990s and 2000s were not good to Vacoma. Then the 2010s came, and so did Vacoma's renaissance. Battlestar Galactica opened in 2010 along with the rest of Universal Studios Singapore, and it was the first of Vacoma's extreme coasters to use this new kind of track that they still use today. Now I'm no expert in roller coaster track, I'm hardly an expert in anything, but from what I can tell, Vacoma used to use the same type of track as Aero for their larger projects, and they stuck with spineless track for their family coasters. But this was the first instance of one of their major coasters using this type of track instead of the other one, and it certainly made a difference. Battlestar Galactica is well received, despite being in Singapore and hard to get to. The next six years saw lots of family coasters and smaller rides, up until the Disney coaster that sparked Vacoma's comeback. Tron Light Cycle Run debuted in 2016, and although it didn't feature the craziest elements or the greatest layout, the theming and launch make this a great ride. Then after this is where everything changed. I know I've been saying that a lot, but just bear with me. Benjamin Blumendahl. If you don't know who Benjamin Blumendahl is, he's now the designer of all of Vacoma's major rides. After Tron, he designed his first full-scale coaster, Formula at Energylandia. The next year in 2017, another one of his creations opened, the coaster that's probably one of, if not the best Vacoma in the world, Let Coaster. 
Along with designing some small family coasters, Blumendahl engineered the Hyperspace Warp, which was the model two coasters in China that opened in 2019 belonged to. In 2020, a plethora of new Vacomas opened around the world. Wrath of Zeus at Vin Wonders in Vietnam was the first of a new model, the Firestorm. The other two extreme Blumendahl creations that opened that year were Hal's Uberkopf, an inverted coaster at Erlebnis Park Trips Drill, and Fly, a multi-launch flying coaster at Fantasialand. Hal's Uberkopf is recognized as a huge step up from Vacoma SLCs and a worthy contender to the B&M invert. Fly is commonly regarded as the world's best flying coaster and one of the best coasters in Germany. The following year, Vacoma introduced new models like the Shockwave and Top Gun launch coaster, as well as adding some hyperspace warps. In 2022, Phonics opened. It's been praised throughout the community and it's the only new gen Vacoma that I've had a chance to ride. I agree with what everyone's saying about it. It's an outstanding coaster and I also have a review of it up on the channel. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot is the latest thrilling Vacoma to open, and it's a whole new kind of experience, combining coaster sections with visual and audio effects to make an extremely immersive ride. Over the last six years, Blumendahl and Vacoma have come up with some incredible new coasters. Vacoma has progressed a lot from their introduction to the amusement ride industry back in 1979. They went from one of the most hated manufacturers, known for producing nothing but absolute garbage, to one of the best in the game. But it's a turnaround story that didn't really happen over Vacoma's entire history. All it took was a few years and a brilliant man at the center to turn Vacoma from hate to great. I don't know what I just did there, I guess I tried to rhyme, but I kind of failed. Anyway, Vacoma is now producing amazing rides overseas, but what about their projects in America and the overall future of the company? In 2018, Vacoma was bought by Sansei, the parent company that owns SNS, another notable coaster manufacturer. For years, people speculated that SNS would debut rides in America, while Vacoma would open new coasters in Europe and Asia. But that's been disproven a few times, most notably now with Circuit Breaker, a Vacoma tilt coaster coming to Coda Land in 2023. The demand for great new attractions is rising, and Vacoma will be a key player in it, overseas as well as in America. So what does Vacoma have planned for the upcoming year or two? I mentioned Circuit Breaker, and there's another tilt coaster coming to Energylandia in 2023. 2023 will also see the additions of more hyperspace warps and Top Gun launch coasters going to various parks in Asia. Overall, Vacoma's come a really long way in the last decade alone. What they're doing now is amazing, and what they'll do in the future remains to be seen. But there's one thing that's certain. The future of Vacoma is bright, and I can't wait to see what they do next.